Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name's Joni Young and I'm going to show you step by step exactly how to paint this vintage retro type of Christmas landscape painting. We're going to be using acrylic heavy body paints today. If you don't have heavy body paints, don't worry, you can use any acrylic paint that you have. You can even do this in watercolor, oil, or whatever medium you choose. We're going to be working on a gray primed canvas. This is 12 by 16. You can do this on any size canvas that you want. It will work best on a rectangle though. And I, all I did was take an older canvas and paint it over it just with gray paint. Uh, if you don't have gray paint, just take some white and black, mix it up, and there you go. I want to make sure the canvas is dry before beginning the next step. And the next step is going to be with white and a filbert brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of water on my brush first, load my brush up, and I'm just going to start pushing and creating soft little puffy circles for some clouds. And I'm just going to add as many as I want back here. And don't worry if you're not happy with your clouds. They're kind of just set back there in the distance. We're going to be coming over top with some trees and foliage and branches. So don't worry at all too much about making them look perfect. I'm going to soften the bottom of them. And I'm going to use uh, one of my round brushes. It's really soft and it's dry. You don't want your brush to be wet. Um, and here it is right here. Just a really, really small one. And I got these online on Amazon. They're actually a set of makeup brushes. And they're really nice because the hairs never come out. So you don't have to worry about getting all those little loose hairs on your canvas. Um, I'm just finding the quality of uh, makeup brushes seem to be better than the brushes I'm finding in an actual art store. Um, so I'm just going to continue softening, making some parts of my clouds brighter. And then blending out the rest of them. You can take a little bit of water on your brush if you need to. It might make your painting look a little bit streaky, but if you have a good mop brush like this one, you don't have to worry about that. The bristles are just really, really soft on it. And then we'll go on to our next step. Okay, so just softening this out a little bit, scumbling. My brush is really dry now, so it gives it that really, really powdery kind of airbrushed look. And you want that with your clouds. You want them to parts of them to be a little bit see-through and transparent. I've got a raw um, or burnt umber now, sorry, and a long liner brush. I'm also going to be using a fan brush. And it doesn't really matter what size of fan brush you have. Um, it is easier to paint long uh, tree limbs and branches with a longer liner brush, though. So you can see I just got my fan brush wet and I'm just going to pull and turn and load into both my gray and my burnt umber. Now this is going to be uh, the color base I'm going to be using for my trees in the background in the distance there. So I'm going to do a little line and just kind of cut in a rough idea of where my trees are going to line up and uh, start from. So it slightly goes down on a slope on the right side and a little bit on the angle up and over towards the center on the left. I'm going to then line my brush up making sure I've got enough water and paint. And you'll know if you have enough water um, by the way it easily flows out of your brush just effortlessly and it looks really wispy like this. So I'm going in a few different directions. I'll be kind of going straight up and down or a little bit on an angle to give my trees um, different uh, directions so that they're not all straight up and down. And then it gives the illusion that we've got some branches going um, off to the sides as well. We'll then come in um, with a liner brush later on and do some trees that are a little bit more um, detailed and a little bit more in focus. This is just to create that background brush sort of uh, filler look. I'm then going to come in here just a little bit. This is going to be our creek underneath or below our covered bridge. And I'm just taking advantage of how my fan brush is split off into sections and just pulling and wiggling to create some instant shadows where um, the trees are above and it's just casting shadows down along this snowbank. Still using those same colors, my gray and my burnt umber. And I'll pull a little bit down below here for some shadow. So I'm going to start loading my brush up some more now. I'll just bring my palette up here so I can let you guys see. There we go. So I'm just let's just turn and fold our brush into that paint, wiggle. Just you want the whole thing loaded up. And I'm going to come in here and just kind of pull lightly for some branches and some tree trunks. Now again, like the clouds, don't spend too much time 
overthinking or overworking each and every branch or tree trunk on your trees guys this is just something in the distance just an illusion we just need a suggestion that there's trees back there okay so just do a few of these little techniques and that's all you're going to need and then i'm going to tap lightly for some of the leaves and foliage on the tops of the trees I'm going to come in now and start adding some branches just on this one tree here. The rest of the trees are going to be a little bit different. They'll be more of a, like a birch tree. And then I'm going to blow it into my white. I'm not even washing my brush off first. And I'm loading, see where I have it, just there on the tip. I just want to use the tip of my brush for this. And I'm going to kind of go in an upward motion and just add a little dust of snow on these branches. It's not going to be too, too heavy. You could if you want. It's up to you how much snow that you want to add. And I'm hopefully breaking this down into easy to follow along steps for all of you guys. So no matter what level of painter you're at, you just paint this at your own level and comfort and ability. Okay, guys, you can all do this. Um, and this was inspired by um, just, you know, they have the prettiest gift bags at dollar stores and gift stores. And I just saw this image and I wanted to kind of do my own thing with it and make it my own. And it really um, kind of struck some memories in me from when I was a child looking at the, do you remember those Courier and Ives uh, cookie tins? Um, just the way the trees look and how it was kind of sepia and black and white. Um, it kind of just made me... Uh, remember some Christmases of when I was a child and I always remember really loving the the tin the cookies as well but the tins of the courier and eyes I love that kind of old-fashioned art and painting style so I just added some more highlights here where I've got those shadows there just with a white and again I'm taking advantage of my fan brush how it's split up into sections like that um, you can really use that to your advantage um, for creating highlights and patterns and lots of wherever you need to have lots of lines all at once. It cuts your time and work uh, in half. It's really, really fun to do and it's satisfying. Um, if you have trouble getting this um, to happen with your brush, you can actually buy brushes that uh, are specifically for that. They're called even tail wisp brushes. Um, and I go over those quite a bit in my videos. But right now I'm going to be switching over to another one of my makeup <laughs> mop brushes. And like I said before, I've, I've had these for months and they're excellent brushes. Um, I'll try to remember to put a link below. And I just got them on Amazon, but the hairs do not, they don't shed at all. They're wonderful brushes. And look at, they make perfect treetops, perfect looking foliage. So I'm just adding a little bit of tops to my trees here, frosty covered looking treetops. And I'm just going to continue over here on the top of the left side and I'm going to overlap so don't worry it looks really really good if you overlap your trees it makes them look uh, more realistic and 3D and gives it that nice layered effect. I'm now just going to pull and drag just with the leftover paint that's in my brush to add my first layer of snow to cover up this road and then I'm going to come over and do a rough little line here that I'm going to define a lot better as the video progresses. I'll be using a flat brush and a filbert brush and we'll be using uh, the liner brush again. Um, and if you don't have all these brushes, uh, you can definitely still do this painting. Just improvise and paint it however you can with whatever brushes you can. And same goes for the paint colors as well, guys. I do tend to use um, neons in my um, paintings and I really love the bright vividness that they have and the way they kind of just pop. They also make great pastel tones when mixed with titanium white. Uh, if you guys don't have these colors I really do recommend getting them because uh, the more color that you use when you're learning to paint um, the more um, techniques you'll develop the more you'll grow as an artist. It's a great way to learn how to get better as an artist and get out of your comfort zone by adding more colors to your palettes and neons are a really really fun way to do that. So I'm coming in with my liner brush, a bit of water. You need some water with your liner brush. 
um, to help get that paint to flow out nicely. I'm using my burnt umber and you can mix it with a little bit of gray too if you want but for your darkest parts you're going to want to just use the burnt umber. And notice how I just kind of turn my brush and I'm shaky. I'm pushing and shaking at the same time. This is going to really create those crooked old looking um, branches and trees that have lots of character and movement to them. So if you're nervous about painting branches, your trees are going to look really good because you're probably going to be a little bit shaky. And then I'm going to do a light bit of snow um, on the part of the tree trunks and the branches to make it look like they're, uh, they've got some fresh fallen snow on them and maybe a little bit of frost. I'm going to come over and add a little bit here in the water. Okay, so I'm just going to soften this area up here and just get this ready for uh, my little wall, our partial wall that we're going to have. And I'm going to not even uh, wash my brush off. I'm going to go right back into my paint and I'm going to add water each time. You're going to need a lot of patience when working with a liner brush because they're such small brushes. They run out really quickly. Um, so you're going to have to have a lot of patience and go back quite often to reload your brush with water and paint. Now here I'm adding a very thick amount of paint to make it look like um, I've got some snow on there and it gives it that sort of 3D look. And it's so thick that once it's dried, there'll be a little bit of a texture there. Um, so for those areas, you probably don't need any water on your brush. Um, but when you want your paint to flow and be uh, really easy to flow to make those long limbs and branches, that's when you're going to need to have uh, equal parts of water and paint on your brush. For, but for adding those thick amounts, just little kind of blobs like I did, um, that you don't really need any water on there at all. So I'm just going to continue to do this, adding little branches, different directions, not worrying if I'm going over any of my leaves or foliage. Remember this is far away. We're going to also be doing at the end of this a light um, white wash over it or dry brush, not a wash, uh, a dry brush. Um, and if your dry brush doesn't work at the end, sometimes I add a little bit of water. And in this case, I think I might just because my studio is extra warm today. And so my paint is drying a little bit quicker than normal. Um, and I'm going to touch on that a little bit too as I'm doing this. Um, I'm getting this question quite often. You guys are always asking me how are how is your paint not drying so fast and you guys always have the same problem of your paint drying too fast and you're asking me what I'm using. I don't I don't personally use any slow drying mediums. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. I just don't need them. I've always this just me. I've always been a really fast painter. Um, but if you guys want some tricks, then um, here's a few for you. So the cooler the studio space you're in, the longer your um, paint will stay wet. It extends your drying time. Um, but if you don't want to be cold in your studio, obviously, you know, we've got the winter months ahead here. So if that can't be done, then you might want to have a little fine misting water bottle. So you don't want to have like a full on spray to make any drips happen. You just want to have that set it on a fine, fine mist. You can mist your palette or you can lightly mist the area that you're working on. Um, that works really well. Just know that if you, the more water that you use, the more it'll water down your paint. So your paint's going to be very um, thin, transparent, washed out looking. So be very, very careful when adding water. And then of course the third option is a slow drying medium. So you can get a medium to add to your acrylics that will make them act like oils. They'll take a long time to dry. Now I'm just going into using my mop brush here again. Um, and just adding a little bit more foliage here and there just to soften the tops of these trees. Um, so back to the slow drying medium. Now it has its benefits, of course, because you have that extended drying time. Um, but the only thing is, and I have used them before, and what I found frustrating is that I couldn't add the layers um, quickly like I wanted to because it was taking forever to dry. And even with a hair dryer, I couldn't dry it off. So um, just keep that in mind if you're a quick painter and you want to add highlights right away and you're in your creative mode and want to just keep going, you won't be able to do that unless there's another trick that I don't know about. Um, so there's pros and cons to all of these things. Um, but yeah, just my advice is just be comfortable in your studio, but don't have your temperature turned up really high because that's going to make your paint dry really, really fast. 
and right here I'm just adding a little little wash of white kind of dry brush and I've got a, a damp um, filbert brush after I'm coming in with just to loosen that paint up a little bit uh, it will dry a little bit darker than this but I wanted it to look sort of blurry remember I'm always talking about this in my painting tutorials you don't want everything in your painting to be completely in focus you want to have a spot where there's uh, full focus and detailed lots of light and shadow and then everywhere else you want it to be kind of blurry and out of focus and softer in color and tone um, so I'm actually going to take some of my Mars black now and I'm going to be using this for the darkest parts of the covered bridge and then I've got a few different reds here to give you guys some options I've got crimson scarlet uh, and I've got my neon red uh, luminous heavy bodied acrylic by Holbein and I'm actually going to be only using two of these reds. I'll be using my scarlet red and my neon red. Um, so you guys can use any red that you have. You could even paint the bridge any color you wanted. It doesn't have to be red. And I'm just going to take my flat brush now. You can use any brush that you want. I like a flat brush because it's got that nice straight end to it. And so when I'm making... Um, um, buildings and structures that have um, a straight end to them um, this is the best brush to use obviously if you're going to be using a filbert brush you're gonna have to be a little bit more careful because they have that rounded end to them that rounded tips so you're gonna be fighting that curve all the time when you're trying to make straight lines it, it'll just be uh, tougher for you but that's not to say it can't be done um, but if you want some um, advice and recommendations on brushes, if you're just starting out, I would get a flat brush for sure. You definitely need one. So I'm just coming in here with the beginning stages of my covered bridge and working on the shadow part. This is underneath the bridge. So this is where uh, we have the snow bank and the creek running through. And then I'm gonna start to build up the top and the side of the bridge one brush stroke at a time it's going to be shorter the end of it because this is how we're going to create that perspective so it comes up on an angle and if you want to sketch this out first um, there's nothing wrong with that at all you can even take a ruler to make sure you have a nice straight um, line and see how it's diagonal and it goes it slopes down slightly and then the the end of it, the end of the bridge, is going to be shorter than the front of it. This gives you perspective, so it's making it's about making things look slanted and smaller and larger in the foreground. It really kind of gives you that movement and perspective that we want. I come and pull straight down here and just follow along a one brush stroke at a time guys you can all do this like I said if you're watching this from your laptop I know you can slow this down a bit and I did not speed this painting up at all this is real time and you can stop replay pause um, so there's no excuses and I and I have faith in you I know you guys can, I'm cheering you on from my little studio here I know you guys can do it if there's anything you're really having trouble with um, I offer one-on-one -on -one advice and I am now doing painting critiques over on Patreon. So you might want to go check that out. There's lots of perks over there and monthly contests to win um, original paintings by me. So we're basically just going to create a square right here. Square or rectangle. And on the top corners of that square or rectangle, it's going to go on a little slant. And then we're going to paint it mostly black inside, but there are going to be some windows and those are going to be really, really easy to add as well. So anywhere that we've painted black right now is all just inside or below um, the bridge. We'll be adding a few other colors later for some extra shadows and lines and um, boards and stuff that are going on inside of this bridge but we're just going to build that up one step at a time so now you can see I've added another line that matches the one on just below the roof line so it's on an angle and then we're just adding like a cross right here this is to build up those little windows and again don't worry too much about what they look like 
because they're in the distance. We've got, we're going to be having the truck that comes in front and those are kind of just set back there. We've just got an idea. We know that there's some windows there. Our eyes won't be focusing on those or trying to look out those. We're going to be looking at everything else here in the foreground. So I'm just going to continue here to build up the roof line now. I'm going to go up in a peak. Simple, simple. And then down where it meets that black line. And then we're just going to be able to see a little bit of the roof. It's going to be on such an angle and it's a, a really low slope to this uh, roof line. So we're just going to have that much roof. We're going to paint it all in white. And a little bit later on, I'm going to be adding a soft a uh, little bit of blue lines to the slope of that roof line for some subtle shadows from the trees and branches around it. So I'm just going to work out these lines a little bit more. They're going to have little shadows under the roof lines, more of a shadow under the left side of uh, below the roof line there. And I'm just going to add some white here that we'll be painting over with our red after. And I just wanted to show you how much paint I've got on the tip of my brush so it looks like puffy, a puffy layer of snow. And load my brush up again and we're going to come in on the other side and do the same. We're just going to fill that little slanted roof up with white for our snow. Okay, just keep on going guys, you can do this. I'm gonna just fine tune my lines here adding a little bit more of my gray just underneath pushing off some of that roof line just to give me a little bit more room so that I can add a little bit of a shadow under there so just a little bit of gray or a little bit of black anything just to get a bit of a separation there all these little Lines, highlights, and shadows are going to be what makes your painting look more realistic and 3D. So I'm adding a little thin black line right there so that the structure looks like it's separate from the background. Otherwise it just was the same color and it was getting lost in those trees back there. And that's also another reason why I like to soften the background. It just really, really helps draw our eyes into what's going on in the foreground. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white and gray in my window area here. And then just kind of make a few other areas there for some windows that are a little bit darker. Just really, really subtle. And see how they're going down on a bit of a slope like that, on a slant diagonally. Keeping a line and theme with the diagonal um, line in the shape of the roof and uh, the outside of the bridge as well. I'm going to begin to start working on my little partial wall here. I'm going to be using a combination of my burnt umber, white and grey and a little bit of black maybe for the shadow right underneath where the snow is going to be on the top of it. So it's going to go on a little bit of a slant towards the creek, but we'll get to that in a minute. And then it's going to a little, little bit it's going to come right down here. We're going to have snow kind of just building up on the base or along the base of it. And if you want to spend some more time on your wall and make it look like bricks or old stones and masonry you can definitely do that 
You can even add some lights or a garland to make it a little bit more Christmassy or even add, I was thinking of adding a little lamp post to it, making it, ha making it have a little light on the end of it. But um, this painting was already really detailed and went for a long time, so I decided to stop while I was ahead. Um, I think it turned out uh, quite nicely. I'm happy with this one. I think this is my favorite one I've done so far this year for my Christmas themed paintings. And if you guys want to see, if you love Christmas as much as I do, and you want to see more of my Christmas and winter painting tutorials, I've got a whole playlist of them. So I'll link that somewhere either in the top corner right now or in my info description area below this video or at the end of this video as well. So you'll find it somewhere. There's lots to choose from there. But I'm just adding some highlights now to my snow. So I went over in just straight titanium white along the top of my wall and then a little bit down here at the base making it kind of look bumpy um, like there's uh, little um, mounds of snow there maybe there's rocks underneath so you want to have some uh, lumpy snowy looking areas and then you want to have ones that are a little, little bit more smooth and you want to leave some spaces with that light gray showing so you've got some shadow playing on that light as well And I'm going to add another thin layer of snow using my white on the road here coming down from the bridge. Again, try not to cover the whole road up. Don't cover all that gray up. We want to have little bits of it peeking through for some shadows. Okay, so back to my long liner brush now. I'm going to add some more snow and highlights on these tree trunks and branches just along the side here. And then I'm going to add some more to the bridge and I'm going to start building up um, the shape of my bridge some more, adding more of the white and then coming in with my color. I'm so excited to start adding some color to this painting. And what I think is really um, fun about these paintings I've been doing lately that are starting off with more of a gray scale or sepia to them is that that punch of color that we add you know and it just really sets it off gray is such a nice uh, color to have for a backdrop or an underpainting it does something to all the other colors it's kind of one of those colors that's complementary with any color that you choose and it gives it that just that bit of old-fashioned feel that we all um, know we love about Christmas um, I love that I love old Christmas movies and old-fashioned um, that just old-fashioned type of white Christmas I love so I'm going to just kind of come right in here and start pulling in and painting this white. I'm not worried about making it bright, bright white. I just want to get the right shape and just a very thin layer for now. And then I'm going to come in with my color and I'll be using a combination of uh, my scarlet red and then I'll be using a little bit of my neon red. Um, I just love the cheerfulness of that neon red that I've got by Holbein um, and the color really really lasts like there's a lot of neons out there that they look good once you put them on but you know an hour later you look at the painting and you're like well where did it go it just kind of disappeared um, well what I find about this brand and I know there are other good brands out there too so I recommend if you're going to get the neon paints you want to get the good ones guys if you're you know, if you're going to invest in some paint, those are definitely ones um, that you need to spend a little bit extra on. Um, I think they're they're under $10 a bottle and a little goes a long way with them, especially if you add a little bit of white to them. So here we go, just a thin layer of white for the outside of the bridge. Take a few minutes, dry it off with a hair dryer, um, just so that we don't pick up any of that white when we're trying to add our nice bright red we don't want it to turn pink okay I'm just gonna let that dry off a little bit more and add a second layer of white after I pull off a little hair there 
There we go. I'm going to come in with my next layer of white on my roof. Not pushing, just adding that paint and leaving it on there. Make it nice and bright. Okay, and I'm going to continue to the other side and then add a little bit down at the base of my little wall and on the road. So just a little bit here and there goes a long, long way. As you can see, the highlights are really starting to stand out. We're already getting that 3D effect here and it's by taking your time and doing each of these layers. And if you're a painter that doesn't have a lot of um, attention span or a long attention span and patience, you can always come back to this video. You can pause, go for a walk, go have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, glass of wine, whatever it is you want, and just come back to it. And that's a nice thing, you know, about watching a video. You're not in an actual classroom. You can't just get up in the middle of class and, and be like, well, I'm tired. I want to go now. But with videos, you can. You're not going to miss anything. You can always come back to this at any time. And I'm just going to continue with a little bit more of this white. And then we're going to add the red to our bridge. I'm so excited for this. Okay, so it's time to switch our brushes. I'm gonna go to uh, my smaller flat brush. You could, you could just keep on using the larger flat brush if you want. Um, and I'm gonna take my Scarlet Red, and remember you guys can use any red you want. Uh, there's Crimson Red, there's Viridian Red, there's Cadmium Red. Um, what, what, you guys get what I'm saying. <laughs> any red is gonna work really nicely in this. Um, you could also paint your bridge um, blue or green. Um, be creative guys. If you don't like the color red, uh, don't think you can't paint this. You can just choose another color. It's as easy as that. You could also just paint your bridge brown. Um, make it all um, using burnt sienna, burnt umber, even a bit of yellow ochre in there. Um, so I'm just going to fill this in and you can see there's uh, kind of like a light gray underneath. So that's going to give us some natural shadows. And highlights and we are going to have some shadows on the side of this um, that are from the trees all around and I think that is such a nice touch to this bridge I wasn't going to add them and then I, I noticed uh, looking at the reference photo for this how much I liked the way that looked and how much realness and that that uh, added just by adding some shadows it can make such a big difference in a painting um, I personally love light and shadow that's what, other than color, that's a, my next favorite thing about um, artwork and photography and seeing anything outside. It's those dramatic shadows, those long shadows that we get. So I'm taking my uh, Scarlet Red with my Neon Red now, and I'm going to start working on the highlights where the sun is really hitting the side here. So I'm going to do some brush strokes. Um, maybe making little triangular shapes, little lines. I'm not worrying too much. I'm not looking, I'm not even looking closely at the reference photo. I'm just kind of doing my own thing for this. It doesn't matter as long as you have uh, all three. So you're going to have this bright red. You're going to have your whatever base red that you want to use for your bridge. In this case, it's scarlet red. And then we're going to have our shadow red. So that's going to be my crim or scarlet red mixed with a little bit of black and you'll see that a little bit later on now i'm going to make the front of the bridge brighter so i'm going to be using my neon red for this where i want it to be really really bright i will add a tiny bit of white to my brush so i'm just going to continue along here painting the top and the sides carefully getting a nice straight edge and filling this all in and I'll be working on this for the next few minutes so you won't hear me talking for the next couple minutes and then I'll be back here and we'll start on our next step together.
Okay guys, I'm sure you're doing a great job so far. And if you're not, do not hesitate to ask me any questions that you might have. Um, I'm just coming in with the next step now. So you remember me talking about all three colors we want. We've got our base red, we've got our bright red, and then we're gonna have our dark red for the shadows. So all I'm taking is a little tiny bit of black to my scarlet red and um, making it this dark color. You don't wanna use black, it's too, too dark. Um, and we just wanna do a darker version of our base red that we're using. And I'm gonna create a few little lines here to indicate uh, the wood. And now I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna use the corner of my brush and just start tapping in and wiggling around for a snow covered little garland that we're gonna have here. Um, just sort of framing and decorating the entrance of this bridge. I'll be adding some of my sap green to it and maybe a few little lights, a bow of course, using both reds. And you guys can add any um, colored decorations or ornaments uh, for your little garland that you want. Now I'm adding a little bit of white to my neon red to brighten this up. It's just gonna be really, really subtle. Okay, and I'm gonna move on over to, just let that set for a bit and move on over to my little partial wall here and tidy up right underneath um, the bridge. I'm gonna be adding, um, yeah, just got a nice straight line in there. Most of that's gonna be covered up by our trees anyways, so don't worry too much about it. Um, I'm just gonna make this look kind of like a stone wall, um, really loosely though. I'm not going to try and make it too detailed. I'm just adding some shadow with my black, burnt umber, uh, gray, and white, just a mixture, and then making sure I have a nice shadow line underneath the snow on the top of the wall. So I'll work on this for a little bit. Uh, I don't have my brush wet. I'm just going to add little patches, pulling and moving my brush in different directions so that it looks like rocks are going across and down and kind of just all over. And I'm gonna add more white, another thick layer of white paint down here to make this uh, next layer really stand out, look 3D. So just more highlights down here. Now once I finish with this, I'm going to take my liner brush again or a flat brush and come in with my dark red shadows for the trees and the branches along the side, the outside of our um, covered bridge here. So you want to make sure that you're washing your brushes off in between. Don't let any of, if you're a beginner, uh, you don't want your acrylic paint to get left in your brushes too long. Otherwise, you won't be able to wash them out and it's going to ruin your brushes. Um, so you want to make sure that you're washing them out when not in use. And you're going to take some water on your liner brush, pull that black and the red together, make sure it's nice and loose. And I'm just going to start pulling and flicking little lines and tree trunks in here, different directions, straight up and down, uh, just like we did our trees uh, all around. And if they're looking a little bit too thick and not see through enough, then you want to water them down a little bit with some water, okay? And the rest of the paint underneath should be dry. And if not, if you pick up a little bit of it, it's totally okay. You're not going to wreck it. You see what a difference it makes just to have a few little dark lines in there. I love how this looks and I'm really glad I decided to do it and I think it's super easy. It's something that you might have been intimidated otherwise to have given a try, but hopefully I'm showing you guys that it's easy and it's doable for all levels of painting. So I'm just going to tidy up a few of the lines here, clean this up, go over with either my white or black to finish these lines off here in these sections. Um, then we're going to move on to our next step.
Okay, so I just did a really skinny line, subtle line of white, kind of on the top there. And now what we want to do is start working on the light that's going to be around the truck coming from the headlight, the first headlight on the left. All I'm doing is using a little bit of a dry brush here, even just kind of rubbing that out with my finger to make it look see-through using my neon red and a bit of white. Now I'm going to take my luminous neon yellow and this is warm. So any warm yellow you have will work. Don't worry if you don't have neon, that's okay. You can still do this guys. And then there's some other colors that we're going to be using. I've got neon yellow cool. I've got sap green. I've got turquoise and some phthalo blue. So I'm going to be taking my yellows with a little bit of white here, just very lightly tapping. And already we've got a nice glow there of light. See how great that uh, burnt umber and gray background work for the color. It's really making the color just stand out. I'm going to add a little bit of those yellows that I just used um, to kind of build up the stonework here on this wall. And notice how I'm gripping my brush, I'm kind of making it act, manipulating my brush a bit to make it act like... Um, a palette knife. A palette knife is something really um, great to use when you want to make something look rough like rocks and stones um, but if you don't have that or you just prefer using a brush like I do then that's how you can hold the brush make sure your brush is kind of dry and you're just pulling and dragging lightly leaving some spaces and then you just kind of get that instant look of some stones So we're going to be moving on to our next step now and I'm going to take a little bit of my sap green, a little ball of sap green on the tip of my brush here, on the corner of my brush actually, and this way I get sort of a blobby look and it'll make my, three, my wreath, my Christmas wreath look kind of puffy and full and then I take my um, neon yellow and a little bit of turquoise too if you want to add the highlights and make it look like there's some decorations on here. You can add just a tiny little bit of whatever colors you want or just white and yellow. You don't have to have a lot of detail on this. And I'll be adding a little bow as well. And I'll be adding some green and some um, other little colors, I think along this garland here. Or you can just do, keep it simple, add the green, the snow, and maybe just white or yellow both of the yellows to create some warm little lights. Something you guys can just play around with and make it your own. So I'll just tap and dab and continue with it along the top and down the sides. All right, so adding some little dots of white and yellow along the side of my garland, making sure I leave some spaces so we see the green through. I'm gonna move on and add a little bow to my wreath. I'm gonna be using my neon red for that. Um, so you can use whatever red you want, of course. I'm gonna take my liner brush, get a big scoop of my neon red there so that it really stands out barely touch the canvas and just do two little dot, uh, blobs for the bow and then two little lines for uh, the end of the bow, the little ribbons there. I'm going to come in and just add a little bit more of my neon red in between some of these shadows. You really don't need to, I just love this color so much, I love using it. I'm kind of addicted to these colors. So with a clean brush, back over to my little flat brush. You can use a filbert brush for these lights. You can also use a round brush, whatever brush you feel comfortable using. I'm going to start adding um, where I want my lights to be, my headlights for my truck. And I'm taking my yellows and my white. So I'll add one there and I'm gonna be working a little bit more on these lights. I'm gonna try to set them one right across from each other, line it up with um, the left side of the covered bridge uh, and it's a bit too low so I'm gonna play around with this a little bit and I like to leave all these little mistakes that I make in my videos because 
I tell you guys all the time, it's a big part of learning. You guys um, can watch me paint and learn to do what I tell you is the right thing to do. But what happens when you make a mistake? A lot of people don't know how to fix their mistakes. And what happens? They give up. They get frustrated. They chuck their paintings out. They <laughs> don't want to paint again. So you really need to learn how to paint right and how to paint and fix your mistakes. How to correct your mistakes is a vital part of learning how to paint. So you'll see that in all my videos. I'm not going to leave that out. I'm going to show you guys the mistakes I make and how I, how I correct them so you don't have to worry. With acrylic paint, um, you can, it's very forgiving because it dries so quickly. You can paint over um, your mistakes right away. That's what I really like about acrylic. Um, I also really just like the the color, the colors of acrylic. They're so bold and bright. And uh, I'm just coming in here, putting this truck on a slant along the bottom. It's going to be on a slant sort of, and uh, making the back end smaller than the front, giving us that same perspective. We're using the same rules as we did for when we painted this bridge. So the front of the bridge is bigger, the front of our truck is bigger, the back end is smaller, just like the, the back end of our bridge. All we're going to do is come up slightly for the hood of the truck, and then we'll start working on the windshield and the top. So we'll do a little diagonal line there, bring it across the top, and then down for the side window. Super easy so far, right guys? And then a circle in the front there by the light for the tire. And we're using the same colors for our truck as well. So wherever you want to have, wherever we've got our highlights, we're going to be using our neon red. We'll be adding a little bit of white to it. Um, and then you're going to have your main red, your base red for the truck. But you're also going to be having your dark red. So you're going to be taking a bit of black with your red. Um, and if you don't want to use black, you can also take your burnt umber and mix that with a bit of red. That will get you a nice shadow color as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of uh, white inside the windows. Soften it, tone it a little bit, make it look a little bit see-through. Okay, I'm just going to add a little faint white line for the box of the truck. A little outline there, soften it a little bit. And don't worry too much about this line because we're going to have our Christmas tree in the back there. And then we're going to start coming in with a little bit of uh, our dark red. And I'm using a little bit more black this time for my darkest shadows. And then we'll come in with the front grill of the truck, so just a few lines, and then our tires. So remember, smaller in the back a little bit larger in the front and then for the rims I'm gonna be right white rims for the tires so we'll do a skinny line of white and then a black a little black outline on the outside of the tires and then a little black oval or circle for uh, the little hubcaps super easy keep it loose keep it simple guys it's art, it's not a photograph, and there's lots of reference photos out there. Uh, old red trucks are really a Christmas staple in art and photography, and there's just a lot of reference photos out there. Um, and if you are having trouble with yours and you want a reference photo, you could just screenshot or take a photo of my painting that's finished and look at it on another um, device that you have while you're painting. If you really are one of those painters when learning that you absolutely must have a reference photo, then that's what you can do. So um, I know a lot of my students and subscribers and patrons, all of you guys are, um, you know, telling me ways that you're painting from my videos. Some of you guys are like me, you don't want a reference photo, you like to just do one step at a time with how I'm showing you. And some of you like to have that reference photo, it just kind of is a security for you, something to kind of keep looking back at so that you know what you're painting on and what it's supposed to look like. Um, so that's a really good um, idea. A lot of you guys are telling me that you're just kind of taking a picture of it or screenshotting it and then you have it on another device next to you. So if you're on a laptop and a cell phone or two phones, <laughs> you can do that. 
So here I'm just going to take some black and start coming in with my shadows, the tires, the front grille. We're going to be using a little bit of a gray and white for the highlights to make it look like chrome on the grill in the front. So I'm going to keep building up this front, adding my highlights, adding my little lines here using white or gray to make these look shiny and like chrome. So it's super easy to do this. You just want to make sure either your paint is dry underneath or you're applying a very skinny um, amount of paint on just the tip of your brush. A liner brush or a flat brush works best for this. I, I, I just kind of steady my my hand by resting my pinky on my painting you want to make sure the painting is dry underneath that really gives you that control when you're painting you can just rest your finger or your wrist on the canvas and you won't get those wobbly lines will be less wobbly um, but yeah you have a, a lot more control so i'm going to come in and add some more shape to my tires here i'm going to be working on this doing the same things back and forth for the next few minutes so rather than repeating myself constantly and you guys getting tired of listening to me <laughs> i'll let you watch this in peace if you have any questions at all please sign up for patreon five dollars a month that's it you get so much access to early videos um, you can request a painting that you'd like me to make a tutorial specifically for you for and uh, one on one with me advice lots of stuff so um, I can help you with whatever you're having problems with um, but here just make sure you guys know I'm using my just to remind you I'm using my neon red for the highlights on here um, where I want it to be really really bright I'll be using a combination of my yellows um, with white you can mix your yellows with the neon red and you'll get a really beautiful glow coming around from your lights I'm gonna go up above the tire make this stand out by adding some more highlights and I'll let you guys watch this for a couple minutes and I'll be back in a few with our next step Okay, so it's time to start creating some more warmth to the lights, these headlights, and then I'm going to even add a little bit of my luminous warm yellow uh, with my neon red just for a little bit more of a highlight on my bow to make my bow on the wreath that's on the bridge stand out a little bit more. It just needs to be a little bit different in tone to separate it from the red that's already on the bridge. So you can see I'm just using my finger too at times just to kind of blend things around.
For the brightest part of my lights, I'm going to be using my white, of course. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later on, but here's where I'm adding a little bit of my warm yellow, my luminous neon yellow. I'm going to add just a little bit of a reflection from the light down on the road in front of the truck. Just a dry brush of whatever is left in my brush right now and do a couple more things quickly and then we're going to start working on our tree in the back of the truck and for that we're going to be using a clean brush of course we're going to be using a filbert brush and some sap green but before i do that let me just start to get more of a round shape here and adding some more of a highlight building this area up we'll come back to it it needs to dry a little bit the paint is quite thick right now um, but we want more of a highlight to make the truck look shiny. So all those highlights and shadows are going to give your um, vehicle that shiny look and all the curves that it has. And just to find it a little bit better. So I'm just coming around the top there with my uh, dark red. And add a bit more of my dark red on the inside of the opening there of the bridge. And add a little bit more of my black, just a tiny bit more inside part of the window here. And I'm going to wash out my brush really well and then switch to one of my small filbert brushes for creating the tree. So I'm going to load it into my sap green with a little bit of turquoise. We need that bit of turquoise because it's got white in it, right? So that it shows up a little bit better uh, on this black background. Okay, so just a few little taps, smaller at the top, a little bit wider as it gets lower down the tree. And now we want to add some frost or some snow on this tree. And of course, just so that it shows up a little bit more. So we just mix up a little bit of our white with our green in our brush and tap 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 leaving some spaces and there we go now if you want to decorate your tree why not you could definitely do that you could dry it off first take a very small liner brush and add some little lights on it if you want um, a little star whatever you want so I'm taking my liner brush right now and both of my yellows and I'm going to try to add an indication of some little lights on here that I think at nighttime would look so pretty. Okay, it's time to start working on this light here, this other light. Adding more white to it to make it really bright and coming in with just a little bit more highlights defining that darker line that we added a little white line there the top of the box of the truck and more here on the rock wall we're getting there guys aren't we I bet you guys are doing an amazing job right now and I can't wait to see your versions from this tutorial. I've got a new Facebook page uh, where all of you guys can um, post your versions from my tutorials. And it's really fun to see what you guys have been up to, what you've been painting, and all your interpretations. I love seeing how different they are. And I'll leave a link below for that group if you want to join. You have to, it's a private group, so you have to request to join. So I'm going to start adding more to the tire now, more white, and I'll be working on this for a few minutes, and then I'll be back for our next step, guys.
Okay, so I think what would be really fun is to add a wreath right here on the front grill of this truck. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did on the top of the bridge. We're just going to use our sap green, tap it all in there to create a little circle, then come in with some snow and just do little dots and dabs. We're going to add a little bow like we did and a little bit of red for some decorations and whatever else that you want to add to your Christmas wreath. Okay, so I want to add a little bit more light and snow to my tree. So I'm going to do that and then I'm also going to add a little bit more gray at the top of my bridge and behind it just to make my roof line stand out a little bit more. They're too close together, the, the white and the clouds behind there. So you'll see me do that and then we're just going to make this um, bridge stand out even more with that extra pop of white paint after. So I just think that a little bit of extra gray in the background really made this bridge stand out even more. I'm going to just go back and forth again here, um, defining my tires a bit more, making a, the shape a little bit better on them, shadows, highlights, the rims, all those little things there, and uh, adding a little bit more of sap green to my wreath there when I uh, first started. Um, so we're going to be doing this just for a few minutes guys and then we're going to get right into these trees that I'm so excited about using all my favorite pretty colors.
Okay guys, I'm back for our next step now. We're going to be using a filbert brush, a larger one that we used for the tree in the box of the truck. I'm going to be taking a phthalo blue and one of my favorite blues and my sap green. I'm going to mix both of those colors together to get a really beautiful rich base coat for these trees. We'll be painting two today and I'm going to start right about here. Just going to do a skinny little line. Bring this right into the foreground, paint over over top of everything there don't worry about it it's gonna make your painting look really really pretty i know it's always scary to cover up something that you've worked hard for underneath but this is an important part of learning how to paint is getting um, over those fears and learning to cover up um, part of your painting so i'm going to do the second tree a little bit taller and just start tapping side to side using more um, of the the width and the length of the brush as I push harder here to make these branches a little bit bigger and thicker towards us in the foreground. Of course the top of the tree is going to be a lot smaller and you know want to have a little line on the top of your tree making it really skinny and then we'll be adding a star to to that later on. I'm going to add some white or turquoise to my brush to make it a little bit lighter in tone. And I'm going to just do a very subtle suggestion of some color down here in this little creek that runs through with a clean filbert brush. And I want you guys to see how I push my brush, kind of fan it out gently to load it. I push the paint to the tip of the brush, the end of the brush there. And I like to add, if I want to have those trees that are just weighed down by snow, um, I like to use a lot of paint for this. So I'm being very generous with my paint. Again, when it dries, it's going to have that texture to it. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over on the other tree. And we'll add a few layers here. Make sure you leave some spaces uh, showing the dark of the tree inside and they'll add a little bit down here at the base so see I've got quite a bit on there and I'm gonna go right back and add some more where you can where it's kind of see-through and of course if you want your trees just to be a little bit lighter in their snow or just frost covered then you'll use a less white Now just carry out what's left over on my brush here, adding some more highlights again right underneath by this tire and I'm going to leave some, of course, some spaces, some of that light gray showing. I want it to look like the snow is kind of starting to slope and blend into this little hill that we've got, this little bank over here that leads down to these trees. So we're going to just sort of blend that all together. Okay, and then now we're going to switch over to our pretty colors. I'm going to wash my brush out and I'm going to be using um, two more of my neon luminous colors. I've got uh, luminous rose um, and I've also got my luminous pink, so my neons. Um, and I'm going to do a light, so you can see my brush is tinted with a little bit of white and phthalo blue. Just tiny bit of this a little goes a long way it's so pretty so here they are my luminous rose and my luminous pink and we're going to start adding little dabs with that with some white making some lights on the tree and just a few little branches here before we begin with the pink and all the other colors and I'm using my liner brush, just doing little dabs and lines. This will give us more of those details we want on our branches for our trees. Okay, time for my favorite part now, you guys. After adding all this white, we're ready for our color. 
So we're going to be taking our pinks with some white. You can add your lights wherever you want. Push and kind of just smush them in there. This will give it that. What this is is the glow from the light reflecting on the snow, which is just magical looking. I love it. I'm just going to add a few little hints here on the wreath. A little bit of this pink and white mixed. And then I'm going to go right back to these trees. What I want to do is blend, and I'll show you here in a minute. I'm going to be blending, making my own color by mixing a phthalo blue with white and my luminous rose. I'm going to be making a gorgeous shade of purple. You'll see here in just a second. Anytime now. <laughs> so there's my phthalo, my pink, my luminous rose. And it's just such a pretty color. See the two? These neon colors make the most beautiful shades. So I'm going to be adding a little filter of this. So I'm kind of going to dab it on there and then I'm going to blend it around either with my finger or a brush. This gives it that little glow that you want. And then I'm going to be coming in with white to make lighter dots um, and shades of that color where I want to have um, more of a bright uh, part of my light that's on the tree. You'll be adding a little bit more white. Uh, and I'm going to be going through and adding a little hint of that purpley color I just made for the inside of the bridge. Um, just another shadow color and then a few lines straight up and down. Okay, this is just another part of the bridge. And then maybe a little bit right down in here so it's not solid black. We can see a little bit of that snowbank um, and whatever's behind or underneath that bridge. But it's just in a dark, dark, beautiful shadow of purple. And of course, if you don't have these colors, you can just use any purple that you have. And then I'm going to kind of just go off over here and add some more details to my truck. And because my paint is really thick on the truck, it's taking a longer time to dry and it's making it a little bit trickier for me to add my highlights. So I'm going to really take my time with coming back and forth, building up more of my light and my shadow on the truck. Now you can just leave yours like this. You don't have to keep going, but I'm going to be doing this for a few minutes. I don't want to leave this out of the video because I think that you guys will learn a lot by uh, seeing the time that I take in doing this, where I'm applying it. Uh, the lines I'm making, the brush I'm using, and all of that. So I'll be doing this for a few minutes. If you're bored by this and you want to skip over to the rest of the tree painting, then go ahead and do so. I don't mind at all. But I'll see you back in just a few moments for finishing off our trees. Okay, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break away from that truck now. And now that these trees have had some time to dry, I know the paint on there is really, really thick, so I'm not going to push hard, but I want to make some of that foggy, misty light glowing effect around some of these lights on the tree. So that's just what I'm doing right now, just softening some areas. And then I'm going to go and wash my brush, and I'm going to go finish off this truck and work on this a couple minutes more, and then I'm gonna work on the trees again by adding um, a few different colors. I'll be using my warm neon yellow and my cool neon yellow. I'll be using a little bit of all the other colors and just really having fun applying all of my favorite colors as much as I want. Remember you guys, you can do whatever you want with your paintings. It's completely up to you. Um, these are just, um, my ideas for you guys is to get help to get you motivated and inspired um, out of your comfort zone most importantly because that's the best way to learn and grow as an artist um, and if you're constantly constantly doing something that you're only comfortable with um, that's fine you're just going to stay comfortable but 
you're not gonna um, be reaching your full potential you're not gonna know what you can really do when you uh, put your mind to it and you uh, trust in yourself and go for it so it's all about taking chances and like I said get out of your comfort zone do something today that um, you never thought you could do or you were never brave enough to try and uh, as I continue working on this truck I'm gonna remind you guys uh, that I'm here for one-on-one -on -one advice, a little bit of coaching if you need it, um, but that's on Patreon, so it's only $5 a month if you want to join. I've got other tier levels, of course, to choose from. And I really want to see your versions of this painting. Like I said before, this is my favorite one that I've done. I've got a whole playlist of winter and Christmas themed tutorials um, for you, and you guys are doing some amazing paintings. Uh, I'm having so much fun seeing what you guys are posting all the time and so many of you keep joining and we've got a wonderful group over there um, so I encourage you to join both Patreon and uh, my Facebook art group um, because on Patreon you can't post your your photos that's why I decided to do a Facebook group um, so I, I need all the support I can get on Patreon of course and I really really um, would love it if you guys would join and uh, it keeps me um, going as a YouTuber and I'm able to afford to bring all these videos to you guys. It helps me um, be able to take the time and deliver better content, longer videos for you guys. So if it's something that you um, are appreciating and you want to give back and, and help uh, me do, then I'll leave a link below for that. So I'm going to add a little bit more to the wreath here. I'm going to take some of my neon red after adding a little bit more of a soft glow around this light and I'm going to add a bow to my wreath. I love how that finishes off these little Christmas wreaths. A bow is just so cheery and I'm going to continue working on the highlights of the grill, the front grill here. I've got a little liner brush, a little filbert brush. Um, I recommend um, if you're just learning how to paint you're going to need a few sizes of each brush so a fan brush have a few sizes a large one a small one same with a filbert same with a mop a flat um, it's really important because you're going to be working on things in your landscape paintings that are farther away um, or closer up so you're going to need a few different sizes of each one of those brushes that i recommend um, and i've got a video actually out showing you my top five brushes that I recommend and I also show you it's a full tutorial start to finish showing you why I chose those brushes how you use them and you'll be creating a full landscape start to finish um, all in one video so I hope I remember to leave that link below if not look in my playlist of uh, painting and acrylics for beginners but let's get back over to these trees now I'm so excited to add the finishing touches here little dots and dabs for my lights using all these beautiful colors just pick all your favorite colors if you don't have these pick, or pick what speaks to you your favorite colors what you love what you decorate your trees with and then all you do is soften them with a little bit of white you want to add a mixture of both okay combination of both and then you want to have a little dust or a reflection of that on the branch below it and around it I even add a little bit of it at the base of the trees um, on the snow around it because I think that looks really pretty and magical too I'm then going to add a star on the top of the tree by using a little liner brush or my flat brush um, and just you know very easy simple way um, but before I do that I'm going to add um, remember those long shadows along the roof line I talked about at the beginning of this video so I'm just taking a little bit of my phthalo blue and white and just pulling little lines diagonally across the top of the roof and it just makes such a big difference so I'm going to make a little star right here make it look kind of sparkly the lights hitting right here and just soften with my finger by using a little bit of turquoise blue and then a little bit of white where I want it to look brighter and then I'll be adding a star on the top of the tree on the right side the larger one and just by doing little flicks you can easily make some stars and then just kind of soften around the edges of it and 
I'm going to add a little bit more of my phthalo blue and my sap green um, for some more shadows on the tree just because I want to be able to see a little bit more definition and contrast in there. So you might see me do that in a little in a little bit and that's why I'm doing that. And I'm just going to be continuing along with my lights here and then the star along the top just a little dot of white and then I've got my pinky rested on the canvas like I mentioned before it really helps steady your hand and then I'm going to pull and flick out little lines very lightly from all angles I'll soften with my finger and then I'll go back in and do it again so you get that really nice soft glow So I'm just adding the finishing touches to this painting, adding more highlights and shadows basically, and a little bit more color to my trees in the base of the snow at the base of the trees there. And a little bit of my burnt umber here, just a tiny bit, a little dry brush across there. You can keep it black if you want, you don't have to do that. And I wanna thank you guys so much for joining me today. I wish you Merry Christmas, and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below. Let me know what your favorite Christmas memory is or Christmas painting and I'll see you next time really soon in another video guys. Take care!